This is an interesting question. The reason it's interesting is because, apart from the fact that it's about titration, the chemicals involved are not given to you. All you have are letters A, B, C, D, and X, and there's another one that's R for the reagent. The reason why this is a useful problem for you is because you are expected to know about certain titrations like sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, and there are one or two other chemical equations that you are expected to know that you can use in titration experiments. However, in the exam, in paper two of the exam, whether it's standard level or higher level, they may well give you an equation, a chemical equation you have never seen before. And the reason for that is the assumption that you can do a titration calculation with any chemical equation. And that is true, you can. It doesn't matter if you know or don't know the chemistry behind the titration. So long as you're given the data, you can do the calculation. This one will prove to you that it can be done. This one also shows you another thing which is important, that there are only two at the most mathematical relationships that you need to know to do a titration calculation. What I want you to do is print this page out and the bottom of the paper there as well. Print that out so you have the whole question and try it out yourself before you look at my solution. See if you can do it in less than 10 minutes. Time yourself. If you can do it in less than 10 minutes, then congratulate yourself because that is how much time you would be given in the exam. It is a six, possibly a seven mark question. And you'll have 10 minutes to do that. So try it and see. Then come back and see how I answer it. OK, let's look at the first calculation that you have to do. Calculate the volume required to react with chemical B to reach the end point. When one does a titration, you do usually three titrations. The first one is a fast one, and the second ones are more accurate. The first one will be done at the rate of maybe a centimetre cubed or two centimetres cubed. Put it into the flask from the burette. You shake the flask to see how it affects the indicator, and then you keep doing that until you come past the end point. Then you stop, you take the reading, in this case it's 25.2, and you know that the correct titration is possibly two or two and a half centimeters cubed less than that. So you stop at 22 and a half when you do the second one, and you add the solution from the burette dropwise. After each drop, you shake the flask a little bit, Look at the indicator. If it hasn't changed, then you add another drop, and so on and so forth, until the indicator has changed. That is the first reading, really. Even though it's the second titration, it's the first reading. And then you do a, another one, in this case, a third titer, and you do the titration again. The ideal is to get the two readings within 0.1 of a centimeter cubed. If you can do that, you stop and you average the two readings. If the two are not within 0.1 of a centimeter cubed, then you do a third reading, an extra tighter, a fourth tighter, in order to find two which are within 0.1 of a centimeter cubed. And then you average them. So all we have to do in this case is average these two to get the answer to the first question. 23.05 plus 23.15 divided by 2 equals 3.10 centimeters cubed. So that's the first one. Calculate the amount of moles of R that reacts with B. Well, the good thing is that this tells you everything you need to know. There is the concentration of R and there is the volume of R that has been used, and we're using the equation C equals N over V, and therefore N equals CV, and therefore the N of R, the number of moles of R, equals the concentration, 0 0.100, times the volume, which is 23.1, 23.1, divided by a 1,000. And the reason we use a 1,000 is because this is measured in centimetres cubed, that's measured in decimeters cubed. So you've got to convert one into the other, and we convert the centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed by dividing by a thousand. 
and that equals 0 0.00231 centimeters cubed and that is the answer. Now I'll calculate the concentrations x in the volumetric flask. So the first thing to do is to check the relationship between the titration and the concentration of x in the volumetric flask and lo and behold we see that the solution of the volumetric class was titrated with R after reacting with A. If we find the concentration of this, we have the concentration of the solution in the volumetric class. That's the first thing. Second thing is the relationship between the number of moles of X and the number of moles of R. And we see from these two equations, and as I said before, we do not know what they represent in terms of their chemical formulae. That's not important. We know that one mole of X equals one mole of B, and one mole of B equals two moles of R. So the number of moles of X equals the number of moles of B equals two times the number of moles of R. So let's write that down. Number of moles of X equals the number of moles of B equals two times the number of moles of R. And X equals two times zero, zero. 2, 3, 1, which equals 0 0.00462 moles. So that's the number of moles of X in the 25 centimetres cubed solution. And we go back to the C equals N over V. We know the number of moles and we know the volume. So that equals 0.00. 462 divided by, in this case, 25 divided by 1,000. 1,000 for the same reason as before we used 1,000. That equals 0.004462 divided by 25 multiplied by 1,000. And that equals 0.1848. And that's moles per decimeter cubed, moles decimeter minus three. Now I'll calculate the concentration of X in the original solution. Now this is where people get a little bit confused, but it's not that difficult. The solution of X was diluted, that's the original solution was diluted by adding 25 centimeters cubed to 250. So it's diluted 10 times. So the original solution is 10 times more concentrated than the stuff in the volumetric flask. So all we do is concentration, CX original, equals 10 times 0.1848, equals 1.848 mole decimeter minus 3. And the next thing is calculate the MR of X in grams. Now, at this point, you bring in another relationship. And the other relationship is N equals little m over mr. The value of little m for x is given in the question as 100 grams. And we also know the volume of solution, which is one decimeter cubed. We need to find the value of N in one decimeter cubed of solution. Well, it says here 1.8 for eight moles are in one decimeter cubed. So N equals 1.848 equals M is 100 and then there's MR. And therefore MR equals 100 over 1.848 and that equals 54.1 grams. That is the value of MR of X. The next thing is to go back to this, and I think that this ought to be 1.85 moles per decimeter cubed as an answer. And I think this ought to be 0.185 moles decimeter cubed as an answer. I don't think it's accurate to say 4.8 there or 4.8 there, but it's 1.85, but you can you keep the extra significant figure when you do the calculations. But at the end, you then 
go back to accepting that in titration it's very difficult to get accuracy greater than three significant figures, unless you're using special equipment. This problem shows that you can do a titration calculation without knowing the chemistry. You don't need to know the chemistry. You just need to have the chemical equations. And if you've got the chemical equations, you can do the titration calculation. And the second thing is the fact that we're using simply two formulae in order to do this. One is this one, where if there's a mass involved, you need to know N equals M over MR. And the other one is this one, C equals N over V, which is always used in titration calculations. And I have seen a IB chemistry problem in paper two, where they used C equals N over V five times in different parts of the calculation in order to go through the whole of it. And then they used N equals M over R once at the very end. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please say you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.